This is the best way to create images with multiple consistent characters inside of them using AI. We've all seen how to create images with a single character in them, but what if you want to add somebody else? I'll show you how to combine multiple different characters, whether they're AI generated or a real person like myself. In this case, I put myself in here with a fictional lady. And in fact, if you use the method that I show in this tutorial, you'll be able to add your characters to any existing photo you have. And at the same time, I'll show you how to keep their clothing the same. Here's how it's done. Normally, if you try to generate an image with a consistent character inside, the AI injects that person's face onto everyone inside that photo. In this case, both the woman and the man have a similar looking face. If I want to add a new character, in this case, replacing the man wearing the suit with myself, the key idea is we need an image mask. That's this black and white photo right here. The white part of the image tells AI where to put our new character inside the photo. And so if you run the AI, it injects me into the photo. And here's a comparison of what the before and after looks like. Now let's go through the complete workflow. First thing we need is to create AI character models using Flux. You need a small set of around 10 images for your character. Make sure the quality is good and the appearance is similar in them. I've also sent my pictures to a compressed zip file right here. I'll show how I made these photos at the end of the video if you're curious. I'm using replicate.com to train the AI models. It's a website where you can run these AI models remotely. We're looking for this Ostras Flux Dev Lore Trainer, which we'll be using to teach the AI to generate images specifically for our characters. Inside destination, give the model a name like Flux Car Girl. Then underneath, we'll upload the dataset for our character. That's the zip file I showed earlier. Once we've uploaded the data, the trigger word is a sequence of letters that acts like a name for our character. It's a made up word, which we'll use later on to call the AI to create our characters. Use a random sequence of letters for this and don't use any words that are common in the English language. Otherwise, the AI gets confused. I'll use uh, random letters like FLMCW. In the auto caption prefix, we can add a text description for the photos. So I'll put something like photo of an FLMCW woman. Remember, that's the custom name we gave her inside the trigger word. Then I'll adjust a couple settings by increasing the training steps to about 1500. I also increase the lower rank, which helps the AI learn more visual details. You can leave this as the default settings though. Finally, we'll start the training process. This is pretty fast, usually 20 to 30 minutes. It's finished training now, and we have the option to run the train model to generate photos. This brings us to an image generation page. Inside the prompt, describe the scene. Front shot photo of an FLMCW woman. The main thing is to include the trigger word or the name we gave her earlier, which is FLMCW. I'll describe her clothing as an orange linen shirt. And in the background, there's a Sydney Opera House. At the bottom of the page, we can run the model and the AI has successfully learned to create photos of our specific character. So how do we go from this to creating photos with multiple characters inside of them? First thing is we need to generate photos of this female character with another placeholder character which we'll replace later on. The photo on the left shows a girl with a random guy and on the right I've swapped out that guy for myself. So use a prompt like front photo of a FLMCW woman hiking outdoors next to an Asian man. We've named the woman in the image and also introduced a new male character who is the Asian man. The woman's wearing an orange shirt, the man's wearing a suit. The clothing for the man doesn't matter that much at this point. I also adjust the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 to get wider landscape photos. And also, let's increase the number of pictures generated to get a few more options. You can also increase the number of inference steps to get slightly sharper details. In the generated images, both characters look like the woman. This happens because we're using the model that was specifically trained to create images of the girl. That's okay for now, we'll be able to replace the male character. So in addition to the female character, I've actually also trained another Flux model to specifically generate images of myself. Here's what the data looks like. If you want to look through your trained models on Replicate, go to the dashboard and then find the trainings page, where you'll be able to see all the trained models from the past. I'm at the model I trained using images for myself. Let's test this out and generate an image of me at the Sydney Opera House. Notice how in the prompt, the trigger word or name I gave my character is T-O-P-R-T. 
in order to inject myself into the previous image with the woman. First, go to this image tab, and inside, upload the photo we created earlier of the female character with the man outdoors. Then underneath, in the mask panel, I need to upload this black and white photo. Here, the white pixels of the image tell the AI where to inject me into the photo. I'll show how to create this black and white image in a minute. Then in the prompt, I'll use a photo of a TOPRT man wearing a blue and white jacket. Again, TOPRT is a specific name I gave for myself, and if we generate the image, it'll swap out the man from the original image with me. On vacation, on a nice day. By the way, I did sometimes get these weird pictures with static in them. I'm not sure exactly what causes this, but I found that this happens a lot less often if you have more variety in the photos you use to train your models. Okay, so how do we get these black and white mask images that tells the AI where to add all characters? We'll use PhotoP for this. It's a free web-based image editor. Drag and drop in the original image. Then create a new layer with this little folded square icon in the bottom right. You'll see all the different image layer we're working with in the bottom right corner. Then let's use the paintbrush. We need to increase the size of the brush a bit so it doesn't take forever to draw over the image. And make sure the white color is selected. You can change the color with the color picker in the bottom left. Then paint over the part of the image that you want to replace. In this case, let's carefully draw over the silhouette of the man. Then add a new layer and this time drag the new layer below the one with the painted section. We'll change the ink painting color to black. By default, the two main colors should be white and black. Now paint over the entire background to get the black and white image mask. When you're done, go to File, Export As, PNG, and save the image. I do get asked a lot about how to keep the clothing consistent between different images. The best way to do this is to use photos in your training data that already have the same clothing. I'm wearing this blue and white jacket in all of them. So the AI will learn everything that's in common between the data. So if they all have the same clothing, the AI will learn that also. Then inside the prompt, I ask for the man to wear a blue and white jacket. And we get pretty consistent clothing, as long as it's not too complicated with textures or patterns. So how did I get these photos for this AI-generated female character? These were created using Midjourney's consistent character feature. First, I prompt for a photo of my character inside Midjourney, and I specifically asked for an orange linen shirt to keep the clothing the same. After I got an image that I'm satisfied with, I used it as a character reference. Just drag and drop the photo into the prompt bar, and then hover over it and select this little person icon to create other images with a similar character. Then prompt again this time, adding in different backgrounds or camera angles, it's helpful to introduce a little bit of diversity into the backgrounds of the photos. And also change up the camera angle while you're at it. To zoom and get more of the full body, right click, go to more, editor. Then inside slide this scale slider right here. The gray area around the image will get filled in by the AI. Hit submit and we get photos showing more of the character's full torso and body. So that's how we create photos with multiple characters in them using Flux, whether they're AI generated or pictures of real people like ourselves. If you want to learn how to add voices to your characters and lip sync them with video, go check this tutorial right here.